morning, everybody. Hey, Nikki, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I love that song to bring us into our Monday training on blonding. <laughs> I'm excited today to be working with you, Nikki. So everybody, I'm Jen Montoya Palmore, and I have the honor and privilege to be working with Nikki Ramos today. She and I have been working together for well over a decade, and she is what I like to call the blonding queen. And we're going to be moving through tons of fun information today about all things blonding from our products and how to choose and when and why to some color chemistry and also getting into some frequently asked questions and debunking some of those blonding myths. So Nikki, what's behind you? It looks really fun. What do you have planned for us? So we are going to be looking at swatching different lighteners to see how quickly some of them lift right out of the gate, the results that we get from them. Also, we'll be able to see the consistency. So we'll get a little hands in and I pre-did some blonding work for us as well. Awesome. So we'll be able to see it working as we discuss it. So we'll have a fun hands in. Nikki will be kind of swatching as we talk and We'll be able to see the end results towards the end of the training, and we'll be able to give you a little bit of an idea of what to look for in our different lighteners, along with some of those key benefits to boost your blonding business. So once again, we're going to be reviewing our Paul Mitchell blonding portfolio, doing a bit of a blonding deep dive, and getting into those frequently asked questions that Nikki and I get all the time on blonding. So we're looking forward to working with everybody out there. And more importantly, if you have questions that you have, you know, you want answers for, please use the chat or we will have a Q&A live portion at the end of this training. So be sure to write down any questions that you might have as we're working through this presentation so we can get everything answered for you. Let's go ahead and begin. So Nikki, I know you're going to take us through a few of our lighteners and more importantly, just as we're working through this, thinking about your blonding business out there as a hairdresser, we know that blonding takes up so much percentage of our business behind the chair. I know that I personally do a lot of blonding. I know Nikki does. And sometimes it's, we go to our favorite form, our favorite formulas, our favorite lightener and product in order to get the job done, but maybe there's a way to get it done a little bit easier or more effective. And today we're really going to focus on the why behind your choice and when to choose. And more importantly, what are those active ingredients in lighteners to help really bring that product to life and give you the most bang for your buck when you are working with a guest to get the best results possible? And what does it all mean? So just adding in all of those wise behind it all is really going to help not only boost your confidence, but it will also drive your business a bit because you're going to have better decision making behind the chair as you're choosing the product to get the job done. Nikki, is there anything you'd like to add? I know you do a ton of blonding with your salon and with your clientele. Yeah, I'm a salon owner in Sacramento, California. I work behind the chair as well as being a national educator. So I have a great opportunity to get my hands on all of these different products and constantly be talking about them. Um, I think sometimes it's overwhelming when you look at our blogging portfolio. We have five different options when it comes to lighteners. And you know, sometimes you look at that and you're like, well, maybe I'll just pick the latest and greatest or the one with the packaging that I like the most. But each product really does something so unique. So I think it's really cool that we're getting together to talk about the similarities and differences between these products because that knowing your products, knowing how to work and the best product to choose for that scenario, that takes you from being a, a good hairdresser to a great hairdresser. So we are going to now be armed with the knowledge and the chemistry behind lighteners to be able to make these decisions. So I'm really excited to dive into these products and get to know them and refresh just a little bit. Same. Well, let's go ahead and begin. Nikki, I know you're gonna kick us off with the Synchrolift family. So I'm gonna pass it to you. Awesome. So Synchrolift Plus is one of our new or launched products and it's a nice dust-free formula. And this is a uh, multi-purpose use. So you can use it on scalp or off scalp safely. And you'll find that you get up to nine levels of lift. 
Of course, the levels of lift that you achieve when you're using any lightener out there in the market is going to be dependent on the fabric of the hair that you're putting it on. So um, we'll talk about some of those things in the next slide, but it's texture, it's density, it's the guest history with hair color in your chair. So when we say up to nine, we'll explore what exactly that means, but you do get up to nine levels of lift with Synchro Lift Plus and it happens rather quickly, but most importantly, it happens gently. We want to make sure that we keep the integrity of the hair intact during the lightening process. So we've added shea to the formula to help keep that great condition of the hair. I remember when Synchro Lift Plus first came out and I used it, um, I felt the difference. It was so crazy. Like I felt the shea in the hair, even after rinsing it out, I could feel the condition still in there. It didn't feel raw. And I think that's really important because we want our blondes to feel really flexible after the lightening process before our toner. Um, so mixing is pretty easy. When you open up the tub of your Super Lift Plus, you'll notice that it's a blue powder lightener. So we'll be mixing one nice, well-rounded scoop in our bowl to two ounces of your chosen pomachal cream developer. And today I'm going to be using 20 volume on the swatches, just like I did for the pre-dones. So when I'm mixing in my developer, I'll add a small amount of developer first and start folding that in gently. When we're working with lighteners, it's important to really understand the chemistry background behind these products. So oxygen is what's um, going to be sort of a driving force to make the lightener go. It's like energy. So if I whip a lot of oxygen into the bowl, it means that I'm activating my lightener a little too quickly and I need it to hang on there for me because it's going to take me some time to get this applied in foils or on the guest hair. So I just gently want to fold that developer in. You'll notice with Synchro Lift Plus, you get a really nice soft, creamy consistency, which makes it so easy to apply with foil work. It has sort of a thicker viscosity, but not too thick to where you find that it's hard to saturate or spread on the foil. So I enjoy Synchro Lift Plus a lot. Jen, what are some things that you like to use Synchro Lift Plus for in the salon? I love Synchro Lift Plus for some of my darker guests that are looking to go lighter. They have perhaps coarser hair, or even if they are somebody I'm looking to take a lot lighter and they are a starting level that's a bit more on the darker side, because I know that up to nine levels of lift is really going to give me that lift that I'm looking for. And, you know, as far as that how to know when you're going to get that full nine levels is really going to be dependent on so many different things that you mentioned. And I think just knowing what that hair can handle. And for me, um, I really assess the guest to see what's, what type of work am I trying to do? What is my end goal? And can the hair accept that type of lightener where we're at today? Perfect. Beautiful for <laughs> No, I even like to use Singer Lift Plus for hand painting when I need a little oomph to my formula and some extra energy. I love going to Singer Lift Plus. So it's been a nice little addition to the color bar to have that up to nine levels of lift coming from a lightener. Let's take a look at our next lightener. So Singer Lift Soft is a newer product as well. So it's like BFF with Synchro Lift Plus. They hold uh, the same conditioning ingredient, which is shea. So this product is infused with shea. And just remembering that that's going to help keep the great condition after the lightning service for your guest. It is a cream lightener. So it's a bit of a different delivery system coming from a powder to a cream. So when I hear cream in hair color world, I always think a little bit more gentle. And Synchro Lift Soft is a bit more gentle because it is up to seven levels of lift 
rather than up to nine levels of lift like its friend SynchroLift Plus. So um, this is gonna be great for any of your lightening needs. I love using it around the hairline where the hair is a little bit more fine and fragile rather than going in with an up to nine levels of lift um, around the hairline for that area. I feel like that's a better choice as a hairstylist to formulate a little bit differently. And so that's where we talk about using two different lighteners on one guest. So I might do a full highlight using Seeker Lift Plus, but around the hairline, that face frame area, reaching for my Seeker Lift Soft to really um, just approach it in a different way. And this is a nice gentle formula, but you are still getting that really clean lift. If I could, I would use this on every single guest because it truly is my favorite. And um, I have gone through, I don't know how many tubes already, but I would like to petition to have it made in like a life size size because I literally go through this and like, it's, it's crazy. So um, mixing is cool. You have two different mixing ratios for Synchro Lift Soft, depending on the job that you're trying to achieve. So the first one is one-to-one -one mixing ratio, and this is designed for your in-foil application. You could also mix SynchroLift Soft one-to-one point five mixing ratio for on scalp. So with that two different um, ideas of mixing, one is going to have more developer, one is going to have less. So we have to think about what developer's job is and also what it does chemically to the formula. It does change the consistency. So if you're using a bit more developer with that one to 1.5, you'll find that it's a thinner consistency, not too thin. It goes in foils just great as well. Um, whereas your one to one is a bit more thick. And this is where environment comes in as a hairdresser. So, you know, we have to think about so many things. Our brains are just boop, boop when we get ready for blonding. Um, we're thinking of the formula, but I'm also thinking of the environment that I live in. I'm in here, you know, Northern California. It's hot in the hundreds right now, and it's a dry heat. So I find because I'm in such a dry climate that uh, the one to one and a half mixing ratio really gives me excellent results on or off scalp. If you live in a place where your environment is very moist and humid, you might find that you enjoy the one to one mixing ratio because you have moisture in the air that's lending itself to your formula. So as a hairstylist, we're able to be flexible in our formulation and mixing approach. I'm going to go ahead and mix a one to one and a half ratio in my bowl for my swatch. Jen, what are some of your favorite uses for Synchro Lift Soft? I'm with you, Nikki. I love Synchro Lift Soft. I'm a cream lightener fan. I've always been in my career. I loved it. So I'm pleased that we have not only a cream, but now we have the option with that's up to seven levels. I use it for, this is what I like to use for hand painting in addition to what we use for skylight. Um, Sometimes I find with certain textures and levels, I need that added levels of lift and that creamy consistency. So because it's not an open air processing, it is more traditional lightener. I'll introduce more materials such as mesh, film or foil to help me along with my hand painting. I also love it for on scalp because I find that it is effective and it gets me the lift that I need, but it is a bit more gentle even on some of my guests who might be a little more sensitive through the scalp area. But I'm with you. I, I definitely add Synchro Lift Soft to the hairline and maybe move into a different lightener when I'm working throughout the rest of the head so that I maintain that integrity and condition of the finer texture around the face. And I think one thing that I love that you're hitting on is those different mixing ratios and We'll learn a little bit more about those active ingredients later, but it's really important to measure your developer with your lightener, no matter what it is. And I know the habit of a hairdresser, I've done it, we've all done it, is eyeing our developer to create the consistency that we love. But in order to have consistency, we do need to measure and it really will help those active ingredients be the best they can be for the job we're trying to achieve. So more about that later. 
And I'm looking forward to jumping into dual purpose. Anything else you want to add on Synchro Lift Soft or any of the others? No, sounds good. Let's go. All right. So dual purpose lightener, um, if you've been around and using palmitol blonding for a while now, or this is probably our most used lightener out there just because it's been around forever. And it was what we launched our blonding with was dual purpose. And dual purpose lightener is really going to give you that on off scalp opportunity there. You can use it for foil work. You can use it for all your blonding needs. And this too is going to give you up to seven levels of lift. Why would you choose dual purpose lightener over maybe Synchrolift Soft or Synchrolift Plus? A couple of reasons. Sometimes it comes down to, again, that consistency. Dual purpose is really a straightforward lightener. It's going to have natural conditioning and agents and oils in it to help give the hair the nice retention of moisture as it's lightening. But it's to me, I feel like it's more of a very true to... Uh, very straightforward lightener. You're going to have a tiny bit different consistency than that of Synchrolift Plus. And also Synchrolift Plus has no fragrance where dual purpose lightener has a fragrance. It has that nice sandalwood fragrance where if that's something desired from the stylist, I know I love fragrance. My A lot of my guests do, they love the sense of things. So um, sometimes I choose dual purpose knowing that I have a guest that absolutely loves you know, that experience of sense throughout their processing time or working time with them. I also will use our dual purpose lightener or color balance. A color balance is essentially a lightening shampoo used at the wash house to help just balance any hair that's been previously colored, maybe remove some tones that are unwanted. It can also be in a more gentle form of becoming that lightening shampoo to help in the beginning stages of a color correction. So dual purpose has multiple uses and I think that you'll find you get a beautiful lift with it. It's very straightforward as a lightener. And Nikki, are you, did you mix already? Or are you mixing now? Nikki is going to show exactly the mixing ratio and just what that looks, how it looks a little different as she's applying. Yeah, it also looks a little different when you look at it in the tub. So it's a white powder lightener rather than the blue that we worked with. And it probably doesn't translate so well on the screen, but um, you can see some little clumps in the lightener. These are the natural conditioning oils. So it's very normal if you open the tub and it looks like that. So when you go to mix dual purpose lightener, you'll do one scoop and use your whisk to break up those clumps. So I've already pre-broken those clumps of the natural conditioning oils up. That's just going to help me to get a more smooth consistency when I mix so I don't have to work as hard to break down those oils. Wonderful. For me, this is one thing that I really enjoy about dual purpose is those conditioning agents. And that is something too to think about prior to even scooping it into your a uh, mixing bowl is to shake it a little and that kind of helps break up some of those clumps because of those conditioning agents. Again, Nikki mentioned environment and that will make a difference also with how much the uh, conditioning will create more of those clumps or not. But really it's easy to break up. And once you break them up nicely with your whisk, then you're getting that even distribution of conditioning agents. Nikki, that looks nice and creamy. Yeah, it looks really creamy. And what um, I wanted to point out is the difference of how the Synchro Lift Plus looks versus the dual purpose lightener. The Synchro Lift Plus, you can definitely see a different in, difference in the viscosity. It seems a little bit more thicker and bound together, whereas dual purpose lightener seems a little thinner, but not thin where I'm like, you know, it's dripping or anything like that. It's just a little bit thinner. And also when I do my application, I will feel that as well of the difference of that. So um, for me, dual purpose liner, that's why it's so great with a dark hair or coarse hair because it so easily wants to saturate and coat each hair strand. I don't have to work super hard to get that saturation in the foil. Agreed. And I think it's nice when you're doing any type of platinum card or all over lightning application. And this is something that I use a lot for 
in my color corrections. Um, I know with SynchroLift Plus, I am having the capability of those up to nine levels, but when it comes to some of those color corrections that might have, I know it's not going to budge 100% to that up to nine. I know I wanna keep that integrity of the hair more, so I work with my dual purpose in this case. I find that it's very straightforward and it really works at working through previous color well and it gives me what I need and I'm able to have that expectation and manage what I need from it up front in my decision making. Definitely. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to Skylight. Skylight is a clay lightener that is perfect for your hand painting or balayage looks. It has kaolin clay and rice flour. And this is going to not only give you a nice um, smooth glide of your hand painting, but the kaolin clay is going to form a shell around the strands of hair that you painted on. And this shell allows me to not have to use foils or mesh or saran wrap or anything between those hand painted sections. I can just drop the next section on top of it and not have to worry about transfer. So when I'm doing such um, a unique customized approach with my balayage, something like that, it helps me to float through the application a lot quicker because I don't have to stop to put anything on. The shell is acting as the incubator. So understanding that, you know, a clay lightener is going to be more gentle in nature. That's what it's designed to do. Skylight gives us up to seven levels of lift. And of course, this is going to be dependent on the fabric that you put it on. So the starting level, the um, texture, the density, and the hair history of the guest but it also is going to lend itself to the saturation that you use. So if you use light saturation of Skylight, you're only going to expect about one to two levels of lift. You're going to need to use a heavy saturation of the Skylight in order to get that up to seven. And the reason is because of the shell that forms. So when that shell forms, if you have more shell then that means you have less inside. And what's inside is the active moist lightener. And we know that lightener is active when it has moisture. When it starts to dry out is where it starts to lose its lifting power. So with the skylight, using a medium or a heavy saturation is what's going to give you an upper level of lift because there's more moist lightener still inside outside of your shell. So that's something unique to keep in mind when you're doing these hand painted looks is to not be shy. And when you use Skylight, you'll notice that it's completely buildable. So I like to lay in my basic shape of my hand painting and go back and build up upon that to ensure that I have a nice medium to heavy saturation depending on how much levels of lift I'm trying to achieve. But um, it is a really beautiful product. A lot of people will ask, can I use this product in foils? You could, but my question would be understanding why behind that, because we have so many different lightener choices on the screen right now. Um, this is more of a specialty item with that kaolin clay and rice flour. So, um, with a specialty item sometimes comes a little bit higher of a price point. So if I'm doing foil work, that's why I would use something different. This is a more high price point item for my specialty balayage service. Um, but that's kind of the approach I like to take is remembering Skylight is more gentle because balayage is a sun-kissed natural look. If you have somebody coming in for a balayage and you are wanting to get as much lift as possible, maybe they have a lot of old artificial color on there, that's an opportunity to use Synchro Lift Plus. And that's how I determine which lightener I'm going to use for my balayage. But remember, Synchro Lift Plus doesn't have that clay shell. So when I drop the next section on top of a painted section, I will get transfer. So that's when I would want to use a mesh, a foil, a clean wrap, or something of that sort. Mixing Skylight is um, very important because of that clay 
that's in it, we want to make sure that we've got a precise application. So when I get my scoop ready, I'm looking for one heaping scoop of skylight. So it almost looks like a snow capped mountain, right? <laughs> so I'm going to put that in my bowl. It's going to feel like a lot of powder, but it's not dense in weight. So if you're weighing this out, it's going to be about one ounce, that one heaping scoop. And then developer. So the developer with Skylight, as well as, you know, we do want to follow manufacturer's directions, but we have to keep our environment in to, you know, in our minds. Because if your clay lightener is too dry, then when you paint it on the hair, you're gonna feel like it's very flaky. If your clay lightener is too thin, where you paint it on the hair, it almost feels like it wants to run off. So that kind of defeats the purpose too. So the mixing ratio is pretty important because I need to have um, the perfect smooth consistency for this hand painted look. The consistency that I'm going for is not so much creamy like my other lighteners, but more like toothpaste. Toothpaste consistency is going to be perfect for your balayage. So I'll go ahead and lightly fold this together. How I like to check that I've done a great job at my mixing is use my tin brush and put it right in the center. And if it stands up, I'm good to go. If I put it in the center and it flopped down, it means it's a bit too thin. I had a little bit too much developer. So that's just an easy trick to know that you've got the perfect consistency for your balayage. Awesome, Nikki, thank you. I think one thing that's so great about Skylight is a couple of things here is a stylist doesn't need to have multiple bowls of lightener at this point. If you're looking to have that gradation of lift through a strand of hair, in the past, before we had clay lighteners, we would need to have multiple bowls, you know, with the lift that we're looking for. We can have one bowl of lightener now, and based on our application, if we're choosing a light, medium, or heavy application, that's determining our lift there. That's one thing that I definitely use it for. Because it's open air processing and you're not using any materials with it, we encourage you to use a higher developer to process. So thinking of 30, 40 volume. I know a lot of times we worry about using those higher developers with lightener, but in this case, we aren't incubating it with anything other than that open air processing time. So you can feel confident that's going to aid and lift. Another thing that's um, a fun trick, and I, don't, I know that Nikki sometimes does this too, is I'll do foil work and maybe be, you know, touching up the base of that natural growth in my foils. And then I have the little tails hanging out and I want to brighten those up a little. So what I'll do is I'll use one of our other lighteners for my foil packets and what is hanging out of that foil, I'll use Skylight to hand paint those ends to brighten them up a little bit. So it's sort of a cheater's way of doing some brightening and a little bit of an easier application. So Nikki, that was a beautiful explanation. I'm looking forward to seeing the end result of that one. Yeah, and I'm going to leave this swatch open air processing as well, just so we can get an idea of the results from that. Wonderful. Perfect. Perfect. So the mixing yeah. ratio for Skylight is um, one heaping scoop to one and a half ounces of your chosen cream developer. Perfect. I love, Jen, that you hit on using a developer slightly higher than what you would normally use on that guest because it's an open air process situation. That was perfect, a perfect explanation. Thank you. It's an, an important one and we don't have to be so worried in this situation. Um, as far as blue oil lightener, I'm excited to talk about this a bit. This is definitely a niche lightener in our portfolio and it is going to do a couple of different things. I love blue oil lightener for color corrections and this is really what I go to for those color corrections that I do at the chair, whether it's extreme and I'm doing lots of levels of lift or maybe I'm just doing an, a couple level change on that guest. To me, I look at this as a color eraser. And because you have choices with blue oil, blue oil lightener, you can choose to have only up to three levels of lift or up to five. And how you do that is dependent on how many packets that you use with that blue powder activator. 
And the biggest question I get, and Nikki, you might get this too, is if I add more packets, will I get more levels of lifts? And the answer is no, it's actually intended to have those lower levels of lift. It's not meant to be as high as that seven or nine. And if you want that, we recommend that you choose a different lightener in your portfolio. So blue oil lightener is going to consist of two components. Three really, if you talk about the developer, but as you purchase it, you have your blue powder activator and your blue oil booster. You're going to mix these two things together and then add your developer in order to activate everything to have that lift. One packet is going to allow for up to three levels and two packets is going to give you up to five. The one thing that's really unique and nice about blue oil lightener is you can use it in a, with a bowl or a brush. You can also use it, and my favorite way to use it is in an applicator bottle. It's a nice thin consistency. You're able to drizzle it on the hair, create a really nice lather to help remove previous color or even natural pigment if you're working in a color correction situation, especially when you want to make it easy at the shampoo bowl in order to do so. And I really encourage you to, if you are going to use an applicator bottle, please add your liquids first, then your packets of activator powder. This is going to allow for it to mix up really nicely, rather than if you add the powder first, then the liquids in the applicator bottle, it will get too clumpy to mix nicely. How you mix it in your brush and bowl application is it's completely fine to add the packets first and then the liquids and just give it a nice whisk. And you'll find that you'll have a nice, consistency that moves very quickly through the hair. Another nice way to use it is if you have a blonde touch-up that you're doing an on-scalp lightener application and you're looking to have that tight touch-up that maybe doesn't have a ton of regrowth, maybe a brush would be giving that concern of overlap. That applicator nozzle is going to get in there and take those clean sections and you'll be able to really just apply that product and lay it down where it's needed. And the applicator bottle paired with the blue oil lightener is a great combination. Nikki, what do you like to use this for? Oh my gosh, my favorite thing is when I have blondes come in and they use platinum blonde shampoo or like a violet direct dye shampoo, to tone at home. I feel like those shampoos build upon each other and it's almost like over deposit or an over tone. So blondes come in and their ends look dull and it's just because of environmental things going on, but also could be overtone of that platinum blonde shampoo. So I love using blue oil lightener to do like a quick color balance of their ends just to get that off. So I have a nice fresh clean canvas and um, a good way to understand what that looks like. If you ever do like a lightener retouch when you retouch the the base they look so clean and clear but then you look at it at the ends and you're like oh man i wish the ends were as light as the top it's just because of those environmental factors so a quick little color ba balance with blue oil at the wash house on damp hair um, is perfect to get out those extras it only takes maybe two to five minutes to release that so I'm not imparting a lot of structural damage on the hair. Now, could you use other lighteners to do a color balance? Absolutely, but if I'm working on platinum blonde hair, does it need up to nine levels of lift? No, up to seven, definitely not. So having this option, I can have three or up to five levels of lift, that is perfect and the most gentle formula when you are blonding over previous blonde. So that is how I like to use it, but it's definitely not something that I'm using every single day because it is such like a niche product, like you said. Perfect. So Nikki, while you're mixing and applying blue oil, I'm going to jump into when would we choose these wonderful products and why? Number one is definitely going to be texture. It's really important in order to understand what that texture is going to represent as it's lightening. Does the person have really fine hair? Do they have really coarse hair? Are there curls involved? These things all matter. And we really wanna encourage the integrity of the hair to remain healthy and overall shining at the end of that service. So just understanding what amount of lift that hair can really support. Of course, color history is right up there with the texture. 
if there's a lot of color history, especially the longer the hair is, the more that hair is long is really going to dictate the history of that hair because who knows how much it's been colored. You really have to ask and go way back in the color history, especially if that hair is long, what is it going to do? Maybe we need to strand test before we get in there and start lightening and definitely managing those expectations when it comes to that color history. And also to manage the expectations that we may have of the product that we're using because it's up to nine levels, up to seven levels. Are we able to get that knowing that they have perhaps overlapping of box dye on the hair or a lot of previous overlapping of color? So we need to really be honest in our assessment, in our consultation, not only with ourselves as the hairdresser, but how can we manage the expectation of that guest? Going back to the levels of lift, what are you looking for? If you have a perfect scenario where that hair is really going to be able to lift nicely, what amount of lift are you looking for? And that will help guide your decision. Of course, technique and color service is going to play a key component in this choice. Sometimes it's also just simply the preference and consistency. I'm a cream lightener lover, but Nikki might be a powder lover. So those are going to be some really simple choices that are going to help guide the decisions based on not only developer, but also based on your overall lift that you're getting with the particular lightener of your choice. We have a question before we move on. Uh, Nikki, what is the mixing ratio for DPL and what is the formula for a color balance, please? And do you use anything higher than 20 volume with Synchro Lift Plus and Soft? So maybe let's recap the mixing ratio for DPL and we can talk about the color balance in a moment. Sure. Dual purpose lightener is one scoop to two ounces of cream developer. So one to two, just like Synchro Lift Plus. Perfect. And when it comes to color balance, it's a really easy ratio. So it's going to be one to one to one. So one part of our powder lightener, you may use a uh, synchro lift plus if you choose, but when it comes to dual purpose, it'd be one scoop to more of that one ounce of developer to one ounce of our shampoo one. So a gentle shampoo, uh, we recommend 10 volume with our color balance, you could use five volume. We don't recommend anything higher. If you're looking for more lift, I would switch to blue oil. You don't have to add any shampoo to that. It will give you a more straightforward lift if you're using it in that capacity. It becomes more of a lightening shampoo the higher developer you choose. If you need to go for it, it would really be dependent on what you're trying to do. Uh, when it comes to adding anything higher than 20 volume to Synchro Lift Plus and Soft, that is completely at your discretion. Always remember that your choice in developer is how fast you want the hair to lift versus when we're choosing our developer with permanent hair color, it's how many levels we're trying to get. But keeping that in mind with lightener, how fast do you want the lift? If you have the skill set, you can move through the hair quickly. You need that energy on the 30, 40 volume side with your lighteners, go for it. But you need to know and be honest with yourself, am I gonna be able to keep up with the speed that it's gonna lift? And, but it's not, it's not that you can't do it. It's just dependent on those things. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into persulfates. Nikki, thank you so much for all of your information. Um, I'm excited to move into persulfates. We're gonna go ahead before that though, we are going to jump into a quick pop quiz to see how you were applying this information. So we're gonna put up our quiz really quickly here before we jump in. You'll see here uh, three questions. So first question here, they're anonymous. You don't have to worry about being seen. If you are worried about that, it's all anonymous. So just have fun with this. Number one question here is Skylight Dual Purpose Lightener and Synchro Lift Soft all offer up to seven levels of lift, true or false? Let's go ahead and give that a tap. Number two, Synchro Lift Plus is designed to lift up to nine levels, true or false? And Blue Oil Lightener is designed to lift up to five levels. All right, good job. High scores, everybody. That's awesome. 
All right, great job. So next we're gonna jump into how lighteners work. And I love talking about personal fates. I know Nikki and I have lots of fun conversations about color chemistry because we definitely are hair nerds when it comes to this. I think it's really important to review personal fates because these are the active ingredients in why lighteners work and give the lift that they give or why would we choose one over the other? And this is going to help you become an even more, not only a savvy shopper, but also be able to identify through ingredient listings where they sit. And this is why I'm gonna get the lift I'm gonna get. Let's start with sodium persulfate. Sodium persulfate is always going to mean that there's quick lifting in the hair. Quick lifting is going to think of that racehorse right out the gate. It's going to start getting the job done. It's going in and decolorizing the hair quickly. Paired with sodium persulfate is an, another persulfate, which is ammonium persulfate. This is going to be the second in longevity of bleaching. Now, when it comes to ammonium, thinking of ammonia, it's really turning that into ammonia. And this is where, when that developer is added, it's going to release that ammonia. And that's where sometimes you may find in your bowl of lightener, you might have a little bit of puffiness or swelling. This is because that gas is being released from the ammonia. And the ammonia is really there to help keep the pH of the lightener high. So it keeps lightening optimal. If you do find that you have a little puffiness in the bowl, make sure just to give it a little swirl with your brush that releases the gas and it will help calm that lightener down. Nikki mentioned environment. If you're in a more of a humidity heavy environment, this is where sometimes the gas is going to release a bit more. You'll notice it gets a little bit more of that puffiness, but no problem. Just give it a whirl with the brush. The third, the third persulfate is that potassium persulfate. This is going to be the slowest to perform in lightening, but lighteners containing potassium persulfate are going to have that long sustained lift. So when all three are paired together, they're going to have all serve a purpose, but it's really important to understand that if you see sodium, you know you're going to get some quickness in that lift. Ammonium, remembering that is keeping the pH high to help remain with that lifting process throughout that timing that you have the hair processing for. And then potassium is going to be that even, even keel, that slow roll to help sustain the lift as the rest of the ingredients are working. You have probably heard of lighteners that are ammonia free. That simply means that they don't have the ammonium persulfate within those lighteners. They may have sodium, they may have potassium. Those all are going to help with lifting, but the pH will remain lower without that ammonium persulfate. So it's really key just to understand, Nikki's gonna talk a little bit about the ingredient listing to help just identify when you look as a consumer, we're going to be looking at ingredients sometimes. Now you'll know exactly what to look for and what that persulfate is going to do when you're reading an ingredient list. So Nikki, why don't we go ahead and take them through just that ingredient listing in a couple of our different lighteners so they see how it works. Perfect. So when you are looking at the back of the lightener or the insert that it comes with, you'll always find an ingredient list. So now we are more informed consumers. So we can look at this list and really understand what each of these products is doing um, chemically to the hair. And understanding the persulfates is super important. That's what's giving us a, our lift. But each of those persulfates are going to do something a little bit different. They're all getting to the same end result, but some are going to be faster out of the gate and some are not. So when we look at the back or the insert and we see these um, listing of product ingredients, it's going to be much like when you would look at the back of a can of soup with your food. So the ingredients at the top are going to be the most in that lightener and the ones at the bottom are going to be the least amount in that lightener. So when we are looking at SynchroLift Plus, for instance, we can see right out the gate that the um, heavy product in it is the potassium persulfate. So that comes first. So I know that it has the most of that particular persulfate. 
And then it goes into other ingredients like cornstarch, and that's going to help to reduce swelling, but also to make it really gentle on the scalp. We see ammonium persulfate and also sodium persulfate in there. So it's got all three, it's like a triple hitter, right? So that's why I'm getting my up to nine levels of lift. So it makes sense. Once you know the features and benefits of the product, and then you look behind it and read the ingredients, now I feel like a very informed hairdresser consumer when I'm going to the store and looking for new items. I know what these chemicals are doing to the hair. Now, of course, there's going to be other products like conditioning agents and buffers that are in your lightener. I see kaolin and we know we talked about kaolin. It's a soft clay and that's what's going to help keep the consistency really nice, smooth and creamy on our sinker lift plus. So you could spend um, a good, you know, 30 minutes on Google looking up each of these ingredients to understand what they do when they're added to cosmetics. And I think that stuff is just so interesting. Let's take a look at the next one. The, so this example is Skylight. So a bit different. So Skylight at the top has potassium per sulfate. And again, that makes sense because we talked about Skylight being a gentle approach, even though we are getting our up to seven levels of lift. So how I'm getting that up to seven is it looks like I've got some help from ammonium per sulfate and sodium per sulfate coming in hot, but they're in different orders in the ingredient list than the Synchro Lift Plus. So that's how I know they're two different lighteners doing two different jobs, right? Um, I see some mineral oils, some rice starch, that's going to help the consistency and also lend itself to the kale and clay to form that shell. So um, all of these ingredients are really doing something unique. And we have amazing chemists that work for John Paul Mitchell Systems that do so much testing to understand these persulfates. So we don't have to really be experts, but I do think it is nice to know information and I just feel more informed and can understand now looking at the back of any lightener on the market, I can tell you which one's going to be fastest out the gate and which one's going to be a little bit more gentle just based on the persulfates that are being used. Wonderful, Nikki, thank you. We have a quick question for you all. We want to find out from you, now that we've reviewed persulfates, does this help create solutions for some of your blonding challenges? I hope you're thinking of maybe some scenarios that this could have been useful for just having a bit more understanding. Awesome. 61% of you said yes. So that's great news. So hopefully this will give you a bit more insight. And next, we have a fun segment. And first, we have a quick question. Do you add anything into your lightener to adjust performance? Take that really quickly. So nope, just developer, a secret ingredient. I add sweet and low. I add diet soda. I add in bond builder. So 71% of you do not add anything just developer and 24% of you add in a bond builder. So good to know. So Nikki- I wonder what the secret ingredients are. I know. Well, I'm dying to know if I first use a secret ingredient, what's the secret ingredient? <laughs> if you, know, you dare um, to share, let us know. Yeah, but. dare to share. You know, um, we are so lucky in you know 2021 that we have such a tight- communication, um, you know, access to each other all the time and access to other hairdressers and companies. And so we see color conversations happening in real time on Instagram or Facebook or any social platform. And, you know, we see posts with different additives or different things that people are doing to adjust their lightener for performance. And um, I think it's important to have this conversation to talk about these different things and not just to like debunk or if it's a myth buster or to shoot it down, you know, we're, we're not here to shoot down what you do, but I, I want to tell you, understand why you're doing something. Just don't do it to do it. Oh, somebody on Instagram said, this is really cool. If I don't understand the why behind it, I am not going to do it. And that's because I'm just a very informed hairdresser who happens to also really appreciate chemistry. So I want to honor the work that our chemists do and using our products to 
you know, manufacturer's directions because they've been rigorously tested to um, be used a certain way in order to hit their optimal performance. So why not use it as it's designed in its purest form? But we are hairdressers. We're a little bit wackadoodle sometimes, and we love to break the rules. So let's talk about some of those sort of rule breaking or bending things that we've seen come up on Instagram. Jen, what's going on out there in the world? Well, lately I've been noticing that people, I've always known about the sweet and low. I've been doing hair 24 years and that was like back in the day, you know, let's use sweet and low and lightener to help with the, the irritation of the scalp. And I always questioned it even as a young 20 year old hairdresser, but you know, when you're new, you don't know what you don't know. But now lately I've been finding, um, people are putting diet soda into their lightener and, you know, of course I went straight to our chemist just to kind of find out what the deal is on these things. And simply they are placebo when it starts to get into more of that, to me, like the diet soda piece of it, you're now beginning to dilute your developer and also the active ingredients, which are those persulfates in lightener. So I think that is something to consider developer just straight up with your lightener is going to give you the best choice for the job. Um, if you're concerned with any type of irritation on the scalp, my encouragement to you and suggestion would be don't cap the guest or put um, foil on top of the hair where you're covering the hairline, anything that will trap the ammonia, because remember that ammonia is a gas that's being released. So if we are capping our our guests, when that gas is trying to be released, it gets trapped and it can irritate the skin where if we just remove the cap and have a nice application of lightener that would eliminate the trapping of that ammonia and therefore the irritation would be less because this is really why people are adding the additives is to help curb the irritation. So making those shifts versus adding food ingredients to lightener is going to ensure that you have the best possible results. So I hope yeah. that clears that up a little. And no offense, but back in the day, just the technology was different. And so oh. now we've got such great technology and we use different ingredients in these products to where we don't, we shouldn't feel like we have to add something like that to curb itchiness or you know irritation of the scalp that sounds like you've got to choose the right product for the right job and also the appropriate developer and checking in with your guests to make sure that they haven't recently washed their hair if you're doing an on scalp so that they still have those natural oils and you don't see any cuts or scalp abrasions before you get started so it's being responsible in a different way exactly we get this question a lot. Does using a different manufacturer's developer matter? And the simple answer is yes. And the reason why is this is what's being tested. It's being tested with. This is where we know we get maximum results. This is, we know it's going to do X, Y, and Z in order to give us the end results that we're looking for. Uh, when using different manufacturers developer, you know, we simply don't know the synergy in which they create those developers. Therefore, it has a different reaction to the chemical that it's being introduced to, whether it's lightener, permanent hair color, demi-permanent. So just keeping that in mind, product is developed to be used as a synergy together for specific reasons. And therefore, you'll be able to have more consistency and end and results when it comes to your products. Yeah, definitely it can change the viscosity. I mean, I'll be honest, I've had to use another manufacturer's direct, you know, um, developer in a pinch and the consistency just isn't the same. And I don't feel like the um, performance of it is the same either. So, you know, I guess in a pinch you could do it, but is it an ideal situation? No, I don't think it's ideal. So let's talk about blue lighteners, Jen, because you know some of our lighteners, when I open up the tub, they're blue, some are white. Does this matter? What are your thoughts? The blue tone generally is added to help create that filter of aesthetics for, say you're doing an on-scalp lightener for a client and we are seeing those stages of lift happening. We know 
the hair is going to turn orange or yellow or whatever the case is in those stages of lightning, but the guest doesn't. And so that sort of adds as a nice filter. So if that person is seeing the hair lifting, they're not seeing orange or seeing blue. It looks a little bit more pleasing to the eye, but it's not meant to control warmth. It's not meant to you know, give that toning effect as it's lifting. In fact, it's important to understand that if you're adding color additives into your lightener, those color additives are actually not performing the way they are meant to because once color oxidative dye is introduced to lightener, you now are using lightener. So lightener is going to really eat up anything in its path, including additives that are created for something else. So most of the time color additives are used for, are designed and meant to be used with permanent hair color or demi-permanent oxidative hair color. So I would avoid putting anything in lightener to help control warmth. It's simply, I, I don't really know any other else way to say it is it's really just wasting product and your money because the lightener is going to just eat it up. It's going to make it not do what it's intended to do in that moment. So just keeping in mind that as you're lifting, use the lift to your, you know, manipulate the lift as you need to, and then really counteract and control warmth through your application of toner. And a key piece of toning is whatever that dominant pigment is telling you, that's telling, that's going to give you the direction of what level you're at. That dictates the level. So if you see orange, you're at a level seven. That means you have to tone at a level seven and down. You cannot tone up. So if you want to be at a level eight, you would need to lift to a level eight in order to get to the place that you're looking to get to. So just keeping that in mind, the blue tone is simply there as an aesthetic piece and not neutralizing. That was great. So you're talking about lift and levels of lift. And during our series, we kept saying like up to seven or up to nine, up to five. What does that mean? It really is going to be dependent on what we talked about in that choice, like what, when to choose. Um, all those factors, texture, color history, what is going to be um, that color history, or even what is that hair texture more importantly? Is it coarse? Is it super dark? Is it something that is going to be able to actually get up to it? The, the number on the, the tub or on the claims is what it has gone up to through testing. And we know that because of those persulfate balance ratios within each lightener, it's encouraged to get up to those various levels of lift, but we do have to pay attention to those factors. And once we understand those factors, we make better choices and manage expectations a lot better. Yeah, I love those factors. That makes it just easy to understand. Uh, levels of lift isn't a guarantee. It depends on what you're using it on. Now, exactly. sometimes um, hairdressers use heat on lightener to speed up the process. They've got another person waiting in the lobby. Um, <laughs> what are your thoughts surrounding heat? I personally don't use it in the salon, but what do you do? I personally don't use it in the salon either. I use room temperature. And the reason why is I know that heat is going to expedite an already very alkaline product. And especially hair that is already wet, we know is going to be a little bit more fragile. So you not only have the hair dampened through the application of lightener and developer, but it's an alkalized product. The developers, you know, helping to decolorize the hair, he is only going to expedite this and potentially create damage. So we want to always think of the integrity of the hair. If you are feeling concerned that you're not getting the lift, then that's where I would think about what developer you're using. And one thing to keep in mind too, is don't let your product process in the bowl. Have a fresh bowl. If you're doing a heavy foil work or an all over lightener application, mix per segment. That's going to be huge. That's gonna give maximum lift. The energy is gonna be fresh. You won't need the heat. But if you are um, even starting in the back, ending in the front, stagger your developers. Nikki, I know you do this a lot. I do it a lot. I'll start with five volume in the back, end at 20 or 30, and I get that all processed together. And to be honest, I don't find I need heat based on some of these tricks that we do behind the chair. So I hope this helps just 
keeping um, heat to really none to a minimum, it, it really right. can affect the hair. Yeah, my station happens to be right next to the front window of the salon. So I get natural heat coming in from, from the sun. So I'm constantly during the summer having to use even a lower developer with my highlights because the heat accelerates it just a little too much in my environment. Now, um, I've seen some stylists and they'll put a base color in first and then go right behind it and foil in with lightener. So the lightener goes like on top of the base color. Um, have, what are your results from trying that? That is old school. Uh, the old school name of it is called a wet weave. And it's when you, you know, just do exactly what you just mentioned, apply, do a, a weave over your base. You know, it's two different types of color. And remember what we just talked about. So now that I, I have my, say I'm doing gray coverage, which we all know gray is very detrimental to somebody's feeling at the end of their color service. They want that gray covered for sure. And so if I'm doing a gray touch up and now I'm going right over that oxidative dye with lightener. I'm now introduced lightener into that color. I'm now using lightener. So it's going to eat up whatever's in its path, sometimes not very well, not very consistent. So what can happen is you get really spotty lift. You can also get the, the hair that is intended to be gray covered. It's not. And now you're left with almost spots of and splotchiness in the gray coverage. So when if the end result is getting, is getting blow dried out, it, you'll see little dots of you know silver or translucency where you would really prefer to have that full coverage. It's worth taking the extra step. I place my foils in first. I go through and then apply my base. Sometimes if I'm in a pinch, I know time is of the essence here, then I will um, apply, I'll do my foil work, apply the root touch up as I'm working. So I'm simultaneously working. So it's all done together. I don't have to go back and do anything, but um, I really would recommend leaving the two chemistries separate and letting the oxidative dye do its job, let the lightener do its job. The end results are worth the, the separation. Okay, yeah, I love that. Thank you. Got it. All right, so we're gonna move into the last portion of our training here. We really hope these questions helped. But to find more information out, please visit palmitchellcolorhq.com. It's the hub of all your color needs. It's a one-stop shop for technique videos, tip cards, conversion charts, everything in between from you need swatch charts, we've got them. So everything lives here and it's a fun place to visit. You can use it on any of your devices or your computer. One phone number that we find that is really important to always have in your phone as a phone a friend is our technical support hotline. Plug this in and you'll be able to call our tech technical support group and they can answer any of your color questions. They're an amazing group of ladies. They are very knowledgeable. They've seen it all, heard it all, and they're there to help. So definitely utilize that. And also check out palmitchellpro.com for any additional needs that you have. You can also have some shake and pour social media posts. There's beautiful imagery. All you need to do is download it to your phone and you're able to add a caption and you're good to go. From there, always follow us on social media. We are always looking for up and coming talent. Tag us in your posts. We'd love to see the work you're doing and featuring our products for a chance to be posted on our pro account. Nikki, I've seen you on there quite a few times with your beautiful work. Any suggestions for how to tag and, and get reposted? I mean, just be consistent and tag your best work. Include formulas because they love reposting that on Palm Mitchell Pro so that other professionals can get ideas and just take really interesting pictures. Good, that's awesome advice. We have one question I see here in the chat. Do you have any opinion about Olaplex mixed with Paul Mitchell? Uh, we don't test Olaplex in our Paul Mitchell lightener, so we really can't recommend it. So I think it's just be at your discretion if you are finding that you want to have um, a support additive into your lightener. Just know that any bond builder is going to help support the hair in the way of a sheath rather than the, re it's not going to reform bonds. That's not 
chemically possible, but it will, you know, create a, some type of strength and sheath around the structure of the hair in order to help the hair feel better. So just keeping that in mind and be sure to, um, you know, just see if you need to alter anything, but we don't test with it. So we really don't have a strong opinion either way. Yeah, I mean, I might recommend doing a swatch exercise just like I did today, have the same exact hair, do one swatch with, one swatch without, and see if you feel the difference. Um, mm -hmm. That's how I would see if it was worth um, making that upgrade to the service. Absolutely. And before we sign off, Nikki, do you want to show the group any of the processing of the lighteners that you started at the beginning of our training? Yeah, I'd love to actually show the pre-done end results and the differences. Um, I think lighting sometimes makes it a little hard to see. So I mm. am going to take some better, more clear photos and post them on my Instagram so you can see um, the, they're going to be minor subtle differences because lightener, we know it's always going to get to that same end results, but my eyes can see the subtle differences. So I'm going to take some photos and see if I can capture that a little bit better. That would be perfect. That would be awesome. And we have one last question here I see in the chat. What was the mixing ratio for, for dual purpose? And what was the level of the swatches from the start? Oh, the starting level was a level six virgin human hair. They all utilized 20 volume cream. They were all on for 50 minutes, no heat. And the mixing ratio for, for dual purpose is going to be one scoop to two ounces of cream developer. Right. One thing that I will say, Nikki made her own swatches. <laughs> she keeps hair and then she made her own swatches. So, you know, if you have clients that you're cutting hair off, keep it use it to swatch with. Nikki made all of them. Pop them up again, Nikki. Just show what you did so people at home can maybe try that themselves. It looks like you just wrapped it in, is it duct tape? Duct tape. Perfect. So this is all handmade swatches, you guys. And Nikki is utilizing, you know, it's not processed, which is great. Swatches are so processed. So this is going to give really nice results. So definitely have fun with that.